can you make a mistake buying bourbon? I mean, one might say no, but I think you probably can. <laughs> Okay, well, let's talk about some mistakes you can make buying whiskey, or bourbon specifically. First thing that I would not do, mistake I would avoid, is to assume that just because it's expensive, it's going to be good. That almost holds true in scotch. I mean, scotch tends to tier its products by age, and they save the highest quality stuff to get older, that's how they generally run it. So with scotch, it's probably fair that the more you spend, the better it's gonna be. Not always, but generally. In American whiskey, specifically bourbon, it's almost never that way. <laughs> it's a total crapshoot aligning quality to price. Like some of the most expensive stuff out there on the shelf is special releases from local distilleries or private bottlers that's just not very good, especially relative to some of the stuff you might find for 20, 30, 40 bucks. A $100 bottle is not necessarily gonna get you a swell dram. There are tons and tons of articles on the best bourbons or best American whiskeys to buy under $40 or under 50, so I won't bore you with all that. Just Google it, and you're bound to find some good recommendations. I mean, Eagle Rare is pretty good if you can find it. In certain states, this is everywhere. In Wisconsin, it's not everywhere. But you should find it for $30 to $40, and then you should definitely buy it because it'll kick the pants off of probably 90% of the bourbons uh, priced more than $80. Number two, don't assume just because it's a fancy bottle it's going to be good. Just don't make any assumptions that based on price or... Uh, shelf position or bottle that it's going to be good. There's a brand called Lusty Claw uh, that looks really, really rad. Like it's this bird bottle thing. It's got a bird on it and that's when you know it's going to be good. No, it's not going to be good. Do not buy the, the Lusty Claw. Related to number two is number three and that is don't assume just because it's coming from a big name or a well-known uh, well distillery that the product is going to be good. So one of the bourbons that I just can't, I cannot like it, <laughs> it ties into both fancy bottle and um, big name issues here, and that is Willet Pot Still Reserve. We have done this one blind in our, our budget bourbon tastings, our beginner bourbon tastings, our bring your own, like it's, it showed up in my tasting probably three, three times. And pretty much all the time, it's one of the worst bourbons on the table to general consensus. And Willet generally is known to do some really awesome stuff. Their four-year-old family estate rise are really good. And then of course they became famous for their um, selected family estate bourbons and ryes that they source from other distilleries. Um, they started that work with Evan Colesveen. Now Drew is the master distiller. And so some of the stuff coming out from Willet now, their own distillate, generally pretty good. Their rye's really good. But whatever's been going into the pot still reserve is just not hitting it. So it is definitely a really, 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 really cool bottle. But uh, juice inside is not... not not quite as good. And again, I want to like it. It's a family distillery, great story, been there, super cool, but, but, if I was paid to say it was good, it might be a different story, but. I basically have to pay to get people to watch these videos, so. <coughs> Another bourbon with a huge name is Weller Special Reserve. Now Weller Special Reserve is the bottom shelf Weller, but it gets traded or sold on secondary market for too much money, like 50 bucks a bottle, because it has the Weller name. And it's just okay. Like it's not amazing. It's not worth the secondary prices. Go get Maker's 46 or Maker's Cask Strength, or even just everyday Maker's is, is as good as Weller Special Reserve. So don't assume just because the name is something you recognize or something that has a lot of uh, panache, 
that the whiskey's gonna be good. Pitfall number four, mistakes to avoid, is collecting the bottom shelf. And by that I mean when you're getting into whiskey, it's really easy to be like, oh, I wanna try this, that, Jim Beam, Old Granddad, Jim Beam Black, Jim Beam Double Oak, and you've got like, next thing you know, 12 Jim Beam bottles that all taste pretty much the same, and you gotta drink all that, eventually, I assume. It's just not good for your liver. It's just rein it in a little bit. Host a tasting, go to, go to a bar that has a really good happy hour deal half off whiskey pours or something and and try a bunch of whiskeys that way try it before you buy it unless you're talking about a limited release that you're not going to be able to purchase again you need to just cool your jets a little bit and then taste your whiskey before you buy it you don't have to buy every bottle on the shelf that gets into pitfall number five which is you can spend too much money on whiskey. Talked about that in my last video a little bit. It's easy because there's so much out there and you wanna try it all to spend outside of your means and end up in a ditch alone, naked, covered in ants. Just a place you don't wanna be. So maybe set yourself a budget. Say I, I can spend this much a month on, on bourbon or when I finish a bottle, I can buy a new bottle. And I'm only going to drink so much in a given week. So that, pace yourself. Just pace yourself. You can get out of hand really fast. Number six. And that would be the crotch shot. The crotch shot is infamous in Facebook groups and Instagram. And that is where you get excited about your bottle. Oh, yeah. You get in the car and you're like, I got to show the boys. Because, you know, you don't want to hold it up and show, you know everybody outside of the car what you bought. So you just discreetly lower it into a phallic position and take a picture of it in your crotch. Don't do that. Nobody wants to see your bulge. It's just like, wait till you get home. Like, so I, I will say, I've been guilty texting the boys, a select number of the boys, about the bottle I found. And satirically, I will place the bottle in my crotchal region. Um, generally, if you do that, keep it to you and the boys. Don't put that one on Instagram. Wait till you get home, set it on your shelf, put it in the grass, make it look nice. Just don't go around sending unwarranted crotch pics. It's a good lesson for all of life. Finally, last mistake to avoid is hoarding without sharing. It's okay to collect. It's okay to bunker to an extent. I have four Henry McKenna's behind me. That's because it's harder to find, but I have a rule about when I buy whiskey like Eagle Rare or Henry McKenna. And that is you only take one, even if there's no limit at the liquor store, you take one and then you leave it for the people who are behind you. Unless, and this is the one caveat, you're buying for the boys, your friends. Like, hey, you text your friend, I found the whiskey that I know you want, do you want one? I got a text from a friend this weekend about the new Dicko Bottled and Bond release. I was like, yeah, I haven't had that. I heard it was great. It's an 11 year old Bottled and Bond whiskey. Please get me one. He didn't buy three for himself. He left some on the shelf and he bought one for his friend. So. Just avoid accumulating a whole buttload of crap and making it difficult on the rest of the world to get good whiskey. If you have hoarded, there is still hope for you and that is you can share it. So have your friends over, pop some bottles or give some good, give some good gifts. Birthday, Christmas, bar mitzvah, maybe not bar mitzvah, birth of a child, New Year's, softball championship victory, promotion, child's wedding, friend just got a vasectomy, you name it. Whiskey's always a good gift, so if you have too much and you look at yourself and you go, I'm never gonna drink all of this, don't feel the pressure to drink all of it. Just have some fun with it, share it. No hoarding without sharing. So that's it. If it's expensive, don't assume it's gonna be good. If it's in a fancy bottle, don't assume it's gonna be good. If it's from a big name, don't assume it's gonna be good. 
Don't feel like you have to collect all the whiskeys that you can get at the liquor store. Don't spend outside of your means. Don't send your crotch shots to everybody and their brother. And no hoarding without sharing. If you want to watch some more whiskey videos like this, that'd be great. Maybe tell me I'm awesome or something in the comments if you wanted to do that. If you like my hat. See yep.